good morning and happy new year. We're so glad you're here at Second. Joy to the world. Earth receive her king. We are so happy that you're here today. Welcome to Second Presbyterian in this brand new year, 2024. Today, I have just a few announcements for you. We will, be, we will be having communion, and our communion table is an open table. Everyone is welcome at God's table. This is not Second Presbyterian's table. This is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you are a visitor, we are glad you're here and hope that you will be, that you can come to God's table. Another word about communion. I usually fail to let people know that we do have gluten-free communion elements after the bread and the cup are the, are the gluten-free. So if you would like to have gluten-free elements, you can skip the first two and go right to the, communion free, the um, gluten-free elements. And then today, there's going to be a fourth person, and that person will be holding a bag one of these bags that will have a word in it. And these are called star words. This is happening more and more frequently in churches that you will be getting a word. And this word, it, the hope is that will guide you through the year. You won't know what the word is. You don't get to select your word. It will be yours and yours alone. There are more than 100 words in here. There are 120 words, so everyone will get their own. So please grab a, a, a star out of the bag, and you'll hear more about it as we get into communion today. Today we had a, adult ed and Sunday school was back, and we had our own Leon Sao, Xiao doing a, a class about Job. And I heard it was wonderful, and he will be back next week. So you don't want to miss it. Come at 9 o'clock, and you will hear him speak more about Job. And now, after we light our Christ candle, we'll prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God.
like to invite Carol Kenner up for a minute for mission. Okay, um, maybe that got everybody's attention. There, there's a poster hanging around outside that says, Till Death Do Us Part. It has nothing to do with marriage. If you are married, if you are single, if you are partnered, the upcoming Sunday school classes that start on Ju January 21st are for you. If you're over 55 or 60, they're definitely for you. If you have parents that are over 65 or 70, they're definitely for you. As a matter of fact, about the only persons in this congregation that they're not going to be for are those people who are under 18. The topic is, till death do us part, in parentheses, really. It is time to start thinking about the inevitable. We all will come to the end of our lives. And I have talked to enough people in this congregation and in my social circle to know that coming to the end of our lives is incredibly complicated, far more so than it necessarily needs to be. And so I have asked some experts, both in our congregation and from the community, to come and talk to us about getting older, aging, what your body's going to inevitably do, what you need to do legally before you get to the point where you're no longer competent to do things legally, and how your church family can meet your needs. In your bulletin, I believe, is a, is a pretty detailed description of what's coming up, but I have in each class for the next, well, from January 21st through February 11th, uh, I have a person or two from the congregation paired with people from the community. And the people in our congregation are experts in this field, as are the people in the community. In the first class, I have to say this because she's so wonderful, Midge Folger is one of our speakers. And Midge Folger is 90 plus, and she has somehow figured out how to live well well into her 90s and is a role model for all of us. But she's going to talk to us about how she's managed to do this, and it's a great story. Anyway, I am looking forward to all the people that are coming. Please come. If you are an older person with children and you haven't talked about this much with them, bring your kids. It is a great opportunity to excite them about the possibilities. <clears throat> um, okay, maybe not excite them, but you know. Uh, if you are, well, around my age, there's so many things that you probably haven't thought about. And this is an opportunity to think about them and then act on them. So I encourage you to come on January 21st. We're gonna meet in the uh, junior high uh, Sunday school room where we've been having the adult classes. And I think it's gonna be a really, really informative four weeks. I look forward to seeing every single one of you there. And if you don't come, married, single, partnered, or whatever, you're making a big mistake. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Just as the wise ones were led by a star in the sky, God has led us to this place. Please stand as you are able and let us together humbly admit our need for God. There are some days when I need the reminder that I belong to God. The world can be a harsh place. We often need that reminder. Let us care for one another. Let us speak the truth we each need to hear. You belong to God. You are God's beloved. You belong to God. You are God's beloved. Let us worship the God who knows our names. Let us worship the God who calls us beloved.
Something must be sitting on the microphone cord. <laughs> I, hear, I see Desiree coming down to fix it. So let's pause for just a second. Technology wonderful when it works. I'm going to stand down here and let Evelyn worry about the step. <laughs> yeah. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God descended on him and called him beloved. God also claims us as beloved children and calls us to confession. Trusting that we are beloved, let us go to God in prayer. For the one who listens, listens with love. Let us pray. Loving God, from the very beginning, you breathed life into us and called us good. However, somewhere along the way, we replaced good with not enough. Somewhere along the way, we began to doubt our own self-worth. Forgive us, for doubt is not what you taught us. When the world tells us we are not enough, you call us beloved. Show us how to return to that truth. Show us how to let go of our doubt and rest in your good news. Friends, God's grace and understanding is deeper and wider than we could possibly imagine. So say these words of grace with me. Our story begins with belovedness. Even when we lose our way, even if we stumble and fall, God never stops breaking through the clouds to claim us. We are known we are forgiven, we are beloved. Thanks be to God, amen. As beloved children of God, let us share the peace that only God's love can bring. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
everybody. Good to see you this morning. It says it's on. There we go. Good morning. Does anybody remember what that last hymn we sang was about? What's it called when you're a baby and the pastor puts water on your head? Uh, baptism. baptism. That's what the hymn was about. Well, we're going to talk about Jesus' baptism this morning, and we're going to act the story out, so I need some helpers. I need two people to be the River Jordan. Riley and Jenny, you want to be the River Jordan? You each hold up one end. Okay, I need somebody to be Jesus. Okay, Veda. Somebody to be John the Baptist. Olivia, you want to be John the Baptist? No? Van, you want to be John the Baptist? Okay. And I need somebody to be a dove and hold this. Olivia, okay. Okay, I'm going to read from this book, and you guys, what we're going to do is I want Jesus to stand behind the water right now. So our story comes from Mark, and John the Baptist was in the wilderness. He was baptizing people, to, and he was telling people that the Messiah, Jesus, was coming. And... One day, Jesus came down to the River Jordan. You guys can lay the river on the floor. He came from Nazareth, and John baptized him. Can you come over here and pretend you're baptizing Jesus? When he was coming out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open, and the Spirit, like a dove, came down on him. You make the dove come down on Jesus. And there was a voice that came down from heaven that said, You are my son, whom I dearly love, and you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit forced Jesus out of the water into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days. So that's the story of when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and gave us all the promise of our baptism. So let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for John the Baptist and for Jesus. Help us to remember our baptism and to know God's promise. Amen. Now we're going to sing our song. Father, Mother,
Please join me as we pray for illumination. God of all the years, as we read your word aloud, let the truth of your love for creation seep into our bones. May we hear the echo of beloved deep within us and respond with overflowing joy. In the name of Christ, amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis. God has called Noah to build an ark and fill it with animals. It has rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And finally, the rain has stopped. When Noah looks out of the ark, all he can see is vast amounts of water. After many days, Noah is curious about the retreat of the water. Listen for God's spirit now as I read from Genesis chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Then Noah sent the dove out from the ark to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot and returned to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the earth. So Noah put his hand and took the dove and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. The dove came back to Noah in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then Noah waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. scared. <clears throat> Today we skip ahead 30 plus years in our gospel reading from Jesus' birth to his calling into ministry. Listen for the work of God's spirit as I read this short story of Jesus' calling from Luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God who calls us to new life, Make your spirit known to us as we hear your word today. Change our hearts and minds so that we too might be called to something new and wonderful in this new year. Amen. The following quote is attributed to Benjamin Franklin. Our new constitution is now established, he said, and has an appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. As it turns out, Franklin was not the first person to link death and taxes with consistency. The written idea goes back at least to 1716, according to that true but always changing non-consistent resource, Wikipedia. The quote, I believe, leaves out one thing that is from this notorious list of certainties, 
and that is change. Change, as you and I both know, is inevitable. We can fight it all we want, but nothing stays the same for long. In Nashville, and probably many other cities, the fact is illustrated when we say, if you don't like the weather here, just wait a few minutes. Change is certainly true of our political climate and culture, and even our democracy. How can it not be when every two years to ch we vote to change a portion of our national leaders? The fact is, truth is now being challenged by some. One wonders, how can truth change? But it turns out democracy is only as good as those who are willing to accept the rule of law in this country. So truth is changed. It also turns out that truth is sometimes only random words that some want to claim to make themselves look better. Lying can be so much easier than truth telling because no one has to prove lies. One only has to state them. In this day and age, truth also changes and is up for interpretation, it seems. Truth is twisted and changed for the benefit of some. Like death and taxes, the problem with change is that we often try to avoid it because change is hard. Change often brings loss, which we do not ever want. Despite the boredom of staying the same, we'd rather get cozy in our broken easy chair and take the risk of stepping out and buying a new one. What if I can't find the right chair? What if the chair doesn't fit all my other furniture that I get? What if the new one is not as comfortable as the broken one that I have? Intentional change requires us to step out of our pre preconceived and often static world and do something different. Change requires, requires us potentially to lose something. Somehow Jesus knew he could not stay in his family's business and be a carpenter forever. We're not told how that happened, but he is called to the wilderness to see his cousin John and to be baptized by him, along with many other believers. In Luke's version, after Jesus was baptized, we read the heaven was open. I'm sorry, in Mark's version, after Jesus was baptized, we read that the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form as a dove. In the Hebrew Bible, ruah is the Hebrew word to describe God's spirit. Ruah can also be translated breath or air or wind in scripture. In the story of Jesus' baptism, God's spirit, God's ruah, God's breath, comes from the heavens and descends on Jesus in what looks to be like a dove. It is the blowing of God's spirit, this ruah, that changes Jesus forever. Now, why is the spirit in the form of a dove? Well, a dove flies on the wind, the ruah, and this dove clearly links Jesus to his ancestors who were faithful to God, and in turn, God was faithful to them. It sends a message to the Jewish readers of the book of Mark who knew the powerful symbolism of a dove. If we go all the way back to Noah, 
The dove was a sign that God had restored the earth to its previous flourishing before the flood. Noah sends out the dove from his ark to gauge the changes in the earth after the great flood. He sent it out three different times, with three being a very important number both in, Hebrew, in the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. The first time, the dove returns with nothing. The second time, the dove returns with an olive branch. And the third time, the dove never comes back. Clearly, the waters have receded enough for the dove to survive. The dove and the change in Noah's world are thus synonymous. The dove, God's spirit, ruach, breath, air, wind, change. God's spirit descending on Jesus like a dove changed Jesus when he was baptized. It was not the baptism itself. Baptism is an outward sign of an inward change in our hearts. God was changing Jesus and preparing his heart for the hard ministry that awaited him, the change in his life. In the Gospel of John, when Jesus was speaking with Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee and a religious leader at that time, Jesus told him, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Change brought about by the blowing wind, God's spirit, God's ruah. Sometimes this change involves loss. Ask anyone from East Nashville or Clarksville or Cookville, Cookville or Mayfield, Kentucky, what the wind can do. They would certainly, I believe, tell you about how the winds of a tornado change their life in only a few short minutes, taking almost everything they had and depositing it into their neighbor's yard, mostly in unrecognizable piles of rubble. Lots of loss created in only a few minutes. Change is not always good, nor is it always easy. In fact, rarely is it easy. The wind blows where it pleases. This new year, in the time of our culture, is a time when change is actually accepted and embraced. 2024 is a new year, a time of making resolutions for change. And many of us will say, what is your New Year's resolution? Is it to change ourselves for the better or to get out of that easy chair and go look for something new? Something to challenge us, something to help others, something to do for God's world, God's earth, God's people? But then we know what happens with those New Year's resolutions. We barely get out of the first week in January before we toss them to the wind. God's spirit, God's ruach is blowing. Like Jesus or Nicodemus or Noah or Second Presbyterian, we are changed by the blowing of God's spirit. And if we listen for that spirit, we will never remain stagnant. We will always be changed for the good of God's world. But it can be hard. 
change involves loss. With the receiving of God's Spirit, we sometimes must leave ourselves behind to focus on the needs of others, the needs of our community rather than our own needs or rights. And the needs of our community are huge. We might have to let go of that which no longer serves God. If you are searching for God in this new year, if you are searching for meaning, if you are wondering how you can make a difference in a weary world, if you're tired of how things are, if you can't take it one more minute, I suggest that you get out of your easy chair and listen for God's spirit, prepared to move and change you. But know, friends, that change often involves loss, giving up something of yourself for God. I guarantee that you cannot find what you're looking for if you're not willing to change, if you're not willing to sacrifice and not willing to let go of some of your own self. You cannot make a difference if you are not willing to change yourself and listen for God's spirit. You must be willing, like Noah, to let go of that dove, realizing that the dove may never come back. God is calling each and every one of us. God's spirit is blowing through this place and blowing through you and me. God's spirit is calling us to let go of the old and welcome in the new just as we do every year when we begin the year. We may not know where that spirit or this new year may take us, but we can be guaranteed that we will be changed just as Jesus was if only we get up and give the wind, God's ruah, the chance to take us away. In the name of God who changes us, Jesus who calls us beloved, and the spirit that blows where it will, but never leaves us. Amen. gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received. Let us bring our gifts to God.
may be seated. Friends, we know what it feels like to look for God. We know what it feels like to turn our heads up to the sky, looking for stars, looking for God's ruach, listening for a voice that calls us beloved. Are we hoping that in the midst of this messy world, we might catch a glimpse of God? Will that glimpse carry us through? Friends, God is already here. Like a mighty wind, God is moving through this room. God is at this table, inviting us forward. The invitation may not be clear as a star in the sky, but just as God called Jesus beloved, God calls us beloved and invites us to this table. So today we listen for those words from God to us the words of Ruach and the Spirit. When you come to the table, you will receive the bread and the wine. You will also receive a star word. You will reach your hand into the bag. There's one on each side. Don't look. Just take whatever word first comes to your hand. You're welcome to share that word with a friend or to keep it private. Throughout the year, listen to what that word has to say to you now it might choose to guide your life. So come to this table. If, oh. I forgot. <laughs> the Go online. ahead. If you are online, put a message in the chat or send a message to Desiree or to the church office and we will make sure that you get a word. Thank you. So come to this table. Come with your questions and your doubts. Come with your joys and your gratitude. Come seeking. Come hungry. Come curious. Come open. Come not because you have to, but because you can. Come with all of you. For there is room for you here. This is God's table. This is God's meal. You are beloved. You are invited. The Lord be with you. Also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of today, tomorrow, and yesterday, as we begin this new year, we once again find ourselves looking for you. We long for the clarity of a star in the sky or a voice in the clouds declaring your presence in our lives. We give thanks for the many ways in which you do reach out to us and speak your word of hope, justice, belonging, patience, and compassion. And so today, we praise and magnify your glorious name, joining our voices with all the saints in the eternal hymn Thank you. God, 
We ask that you would make yourself and your mission known to us. Do what only you can do. Reach into our spirits to give us a boost of confidence that love is real and we are not alone. Remind us that we are beloved in your eyes, no matter what the world might say about us. In a broken and fearful world, your mercy is greater than our understanding. So let us claim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We know, giver of life, that our efforts often seem too little and too late. We don't have gold or frankincense or myrrh. We haven't thrown off our shoes to honor your holy ground. We haven't been baptized in the Jordan River. We haven't spent the last several days traveling here by camel. We are no Magi or Moses or Messiah, but we are yours. Instead, today, we bring ourselves to this table, to your table, in hopes of catching a glimpse of you through the movement of your spirit. Speak to us in this bread. Speak to us in this cup. Speak to us through these star words. Speak to us as you spoke through the Spirit at Jesus' baptism, so that these star words may be a tool that helps us to find you in the coming year. Holy God, you call us beloved, and you are with us in joy. You are with us in our sorrow, too. Surely, even as we pray, you are with us here as well. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Christ taught us to pray, together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, he took bread. And after giving thanks for the bread, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take this and eat, all of you, for this is my body, broken for you. Every time you do it, remember me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, This is the cup of salvation poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, remembering me every time that you do this. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all are invited.
Will you pray with me? God of open horizons and open words and open roads, like the Magi so many years ago, we are here seeking you. Step by step, you have seen us, claimed us, and called us beloved. Today we have drawn Star War words. For some, these words are full of meaning and challenge and invitation. For others, these words are a blank canvas inviting you into our lives. So as a new year dawns, we pray that just as you have spoken to the generations before us, you would speak to us again. Allow us to use these star words as a tool that might help us hear you more clearly. May they guide us as the star guided the Magi. We reach out to you in praise. Amen. you've got your star word go home and put it on your refrigerator that's what Clee said she does put it on your refrigerator see if God speaks to you in this new year through this in any way that God's spirit moves it is God's spirit moving us listen for it 
however it may come. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the spirit of fellowship be with you this day and all the days ahead. Amen. Amen.